loading this one up let's look at the drums first so it looks like we have an intro section with just a kick oh oh yeah right shout out to versace on on this track this is the original sample from versace's drum kit and then this is what i did to it The first thing in the chain, I have a reverb, 82% wet. I have it set to four seconds, decay time. And how I get that sound, that ducking out sound, is I automated a utility plug. So if we zoom in on this, you'll see it's ducking out and then going full volume, ducking out and going full volume. And you'll see the gain knob is going up and down. So part of that effect is you heard the original sample, then with the long reverb tail, and then the ducking gain. That's what gives it that trippy sound effect. After that, I did some wild EQ where I cut all the mid range and all the low at like seven or eight decibels. There's a little bump. And then I did a little cut of some harsh frequencies at 1.1K. After that, I hit the glue compressor a little bit, even though it's, it's going hard, it's just tapping the needle a little bit. Turn up the makeup gain. And I'm using this compressor to sidechain to the kick. So every time the kick hits, the melody ducks up. As you can see from that little line that goes down. These are off, and that's it on that track. So this is what it sounds like all together. So that sound really covers that intro part. And then kick drum and a snare drum. And then the 808. I think with this beat, I was really trying to step out of the drums that knock vibe, and I was trying to take sounds from other kits and just making that shit knock. On this 808, I took just a sample called Special 808. Nothing much happening, just, just the 808. Didn't even mix it any differently. So basic kick, snare, 808, and I have some rolls, I remember. So let's... And how I did that, I have the root note at D, then I have D an octave up, and then back to the root note. You can see I have glide on. It's starting here, going up there, because these are overlapping. And then when that's playing, this note hits again, so it glides back down. And then that note hits again. So if we look at these settings, I have glide set to 191. So that is what gives it the sound. And then I have another glide here where I just did like a roll. I think I just went across the keyboard and just did that. And this is what that sounds like. So instead of like an FL drawing out the glides or Ableton drawing it out, I just did automatic keyboard roll glide. Another effect that I did, I got a pink noise sample. I'll show you what it sounds like. You probably can't hear it on the stream because it's in mono, which I'm going to work on getting it in stereo. But it's going from ear to ear and it's speeding up. It's getting choppy. What I did was I cut all the lows at 579 and did like a slope upward. Auto pan, what it's doing is it's starting at zero, the amount. You can see as I click later, it's slowly moving up in amount. So the amount of the effect and the rate is moving up. So what that's doing is it's getting more of the auto pan effect and it's increasing the speed that the auto pan effect is affecting the sound. Then from there, if you look at the reverb, at about three quarters of the way through, the dry wet starts increasing all the way to 73%. And then I added a second auto pan effect just to make it go absolutely crazy. And then the last thing, I have a utility plugin to automate the volume down so it goes down to nothing. Underneath that, I just took a shout from Drums and Knock Volume 2. Let's mute the effect. I'll show you just the shout. That isn't muted. That's the shout. <laughs> so what I did was I warped it, and then I dragged out one of the warp markers to just extend it. So if we turn off warp, regular shout, turn it back on. just to give it that effect. Then what I did, I cut all the lows again. That's crazy. Okay, cut all the lows, did a long reverb, 36 second reverb tail. Did the same effect with the auto pan. And compression. So with the track.
crazy. <laughs> then I have a pitched up show, just saturated the shit out of it, distorted it. And then I just did a reverse reverb tail to give it like a dramatic lead in effect. So here I just have a hi-hat, a hi-hat from Crane. What I have on it is some delay, just to throw it off the grid. So I use a delay plugin to throw things off time. And then I have a, a delay plugin that I'm using for the Haas effect. So what the Haas effect is, it makes it sound 3D, like isotope imager. I put the left side forward by eight milliseconds. It makes the hi-hat sound image, like with isotope imager. Then I threw saturator on it. So this is the hi-hat before saturator and then after. So I just made it my own. Transient master, I did that to tighten the sound. So without it, with it, just tightened up that hi-hat. Then I did an EQ cut, everything below about 560 and everything above 7.7 .7 kilohertz. Then I just have a horn, a horn sound I use from a complete. With this track, I just took a vocal part from Omnisphere. I cut the lows, put a ton of OTT on it, without the OTT, and with it. Just makes it brighter, makes it fuller. Then I added reverb, a little bit of glue compression just to, to level it out. And then I have the utility plugin. When I click it, you'll see that I'm doing the same sidechain thing. So if you look at the shape, it's cutting all the volume down to zero, then back up to the regular level, down, back up, and then a quicker spike, down, back up, so. Another reason why I like to sidechain, it just gives you a lot of control about the type of sidechain that you want. Then I got another white noise sample. Did the same kind of thing as the last white noise sample, automating the gain, Haas effect, and glue compressor. Same thing. Took a sound effect and added reverb and automated the utility gain. This is what it all sounds like together. And then just some shouts. I got a missing plug-in, Isotope Nectar here. Cause that's an old one, it doesn't work with, with this computer. Saturator turned way up. This is a cool sound, I like this. I wanna use this. I like that sample. So I got a saturator, glue compressor hitting hard, reverb, cut all the lows below about 650, then the Haas effect, just to make it wide. Wouldn't be a decap track without all the shouts. Oh, here we go. This is fun stuff right here. Let's solo all this. This is just some percussion I played specifically for this track. Let's start with the first piece. I have a conga back there that I just played some conga on. Snaps, just me snapping. Automated the reverb, added a bunch of glue compression, like 10 decibels of gain reduction or more. This beat has a lot of automation. What I'm automating is the dry wet on the reverb, so the reverb is increasing because it's going into the moment of the drop. So the reverb's increasing to create tension. Then I'm cutting everything below 194, turning it up since it loses volume, and then I have the auto filter automating a high pass. So watch everything's automating at the same time. Clap. Just three different claps. Those are live claps that I did, and I added a lot of glue compression, reverb, cut some lows, turn up some volume. It gets a little louder as it goes on and I did a low pass filter as it goes on to give it dramatic effect. Then here, I remember I made this beat right after I got home from Africa. So I had some African percussion and I just played that on here. These sounds are in Drums at Knock volume five. Yeah. Um, 
Wavy Dud said, I like how it's mainly just stock stuff. I mean, honestly, you can do almost everything with all stock plugins. That's one thing I wanted to talk about. I don't even know if I had any third party plugins. I had like Isotope Nectar, but it wasn't even active. Yeah, this is mostly all stock plugins and a complete for the horn and then a sample from Versace. It's mostly stock plugins. It just goes to show you that you're good with mostly stock plugins. So let's check out the master channel. Simple. Fab filter, that's one non-stock plugin, but you could easily use the Ableton EQ. Let's hear it with no master. It's already clipping. The master channel's just tightening it up a little bit. Somebody's gonna tell me, look, you shouldn't be clipping the way you are. But listen, if it sounds good, it sounds good. I don't give a fuck. If it clips, let it clip. That's fine with me. You know, next time they tell you don't clip, tell them, I don't care. I don't care if it's clipping. We're good. Sounds good to me. Leave it. So <laughs> here what I'm doing is I'm cutting some of the lows and some of the highs in linear phase mode. So without it, with it, minor, glue compressor, With all that said, I probably would have mixed this track differently if I had done it today, but that's a different story. If you ain't redlining, you ain't headlining. Glue compressor, how I'm using this is subtle compression. You can see the gain reductions just tap in and soft clipping on. So it's cutting off the transients and giving it a soft clip sound, kind of like an analog console. So for those of you who've been watching my stream, you know sometimes in Ableton, I'll use glue compressor to give it that soft clip sound. Limiter. And then a spectrum, just to see the waveform. That's see you out there. I hope that was helpful. Decap.